That don't sound good. This is my 1999 E46 323i BMW, and it blew a spark plug out of the number two cylinder. So we're going to try and time start it today to fix it. But first, we'll start it up without the spark plug in, so you can hear what it sounds like. And it does drive like this. So that sounds pretty bad. All right, make sure it's neutral here. That don't sound good. I don't know if you see down there, but you can literally see the cylinder moving, the piston. It looks fine, it looks clean. I don't know what the popping sounds are. It might be backfires. At least I'm hoping that's what they are. All right, well this is new. It was not doing this before. Yeah, that's new. This is the timeshare kit I ordered. And inside, it comes with inserts. Here, I have another bag as well. And they come in different lengths. We have to find the right length. And it has a tap, which is here. And that allows us to thread in. It has a seat cutter. And the seat allows this flange, and it's probably hard to see, to seat properly, as well as the washer on the spark plug to seat properly and seal. It has an insert tool, which is this and that allows this to thread in and then it spreads it out and cuts finalizes the threads inside so it doesn't come back out and it also just has the tools to provide the mechanical leverage to actually drive all the stuff into place so i'll show how that's done um, this spark plug does not go to this engine it was just the spare i had this is the correct spark plug and it's brand new that goes to the engine the first thing i'm going to do is take this tap as a dual tap so it's got threads to get it started and hopefully have it go straight. And then it has the new enlargement threads. And what I'm gonna do is instead of here, there's a tub of grease, and this is just to keep things clean. I'm gonna stick the tap in the grease, basically cover it, clean up the end of that when I have my second hand available. And this will allow the chips from the metal as the threads are being cut to hopefully stick in this grease. And then I've put it in the hole and started to thread it in by hand. And it's kind of grabbing, so that's good. It will self-center, and then it will tighten up. And then we'll use the provided tool. Drop it over the mic. But we'll use the provided tool here to turn it. And it looks like it's probably gonna be um, interfering with these bolts. So what I'll do is I'll switch to a ratchet. When I switch that ratchet, We'll just thread it in a couple turns at a time, back it out to break the chips up, thread it back in, back it out, take the tap out, clean it off, and just do that until we're completely through. A quick tip while you're doing this, I had a problem with the tooling falling out of the holder. So what I did is I took a single piece of electrical tape right here, just put it right across the end, and then shoved it inside the holder, and now it doesn't fall out, so that makes it much easier. Just cut a few threads at a time, and then you just back it up, break the chip, and keep going. All right, and you start to see the chips here. It's actually not bad at all, so it can go much further. But what we'll do is we'll clean these chips out and keep going. I probably went too far on that one. I'm through. I can feel I'm completely through the head. So we're going to put the insert in. Now that we cut the threads, we're going to thread the tap back in and that's used as a guide. Then we're going to use the seat cutter, which, which goes around the tap to cut a new seat. And then we can thread the insert in. The, the seat has been cut, the threads have been cut. We're going to insert the insert into the head and hopefully this will work. It says to be clean. There's only so much I can do. The hole has very tight access. So I think everywhere this is going is clean, but there is grease in there. The insert is installed. Got our spark plug, hopefully it will go in. Before it wouldn't catch at all, I should have grabbed a video of that, but I forgot to. So, it seems like it's starting in. That's good. And I'll come back because the rest of this is really just the same as installing a spark plug. All right, so it did tighten up. It's in. 
it did not come off on the end of this, which is an improvement from before. All right, new boot, spark plugs tightened down, no problem. The old boot is completely destroyed. So let's pop it in and hopefully it'll work. Here goes nothing. New spark plug installed, new coil installed. Might still have the cylinder disabled because of the uh, codes, but hopefully it'll sound better. Okay, I'm beginning to think this car has uh, more problems than just the blown out spark plug at this point. That's not good. All right, here's the deal. Clearly we fixed the spark plug. The noises aren't nearly as bad. I'm still hearing something. It actually sounds like it's coming from probably cylinder number five, but cylinder number five seems to work. So maybe that spark plug's loose. I'll check it here in a second. But here's the bad news. If I disconnect cylinder number one here, and I did this on all of them, you can hear the engine rev down. So you can hear it, plug it back in, it starts running again. So this one works. Number two, number two, I just unplugged it, plugged it back in, there is no change. Cylinder number two is not working. So that means at this point, either the coil is bad or it probably has like a compression issue. We're back. The noise was a loose plug in cylinder five. It wasn't super loose, but I guess it was enough. It was losing compression. I swapped the number two and three coils here. And now the engine is running smooth, but sometimes it drops the cylinder. You can hear it kind of get rough, and then it goes back to being smooth. It's very weird. All right, I made it home, but the car kept going into five cylinders and dropping that sixth cylinder, which is probably number two, but I'm not positive. So what I would do is use torque to just reset the check engine light every time it would set, and it started running relatively okay. I think it might actually be an electrical issue, but we're gonna check that by running a compression test on it, so we'll know what's going on. All right, the car is in the garage. I've got a compression tester here. So far, these coils for the most part all look fine. Except, let's see, these are in order of how they came out of the engine. So this is number three. That originally would have been over here. Here's number two, which I think is actually operational. But I no noticed this when I pulled it out of the car. If you look right here, hopefully it shows up on the camera. It's melted. None of the other plug, um, none of the other quills look like that. And I also suspect this boot might not be fully seated. However, this is on the number three cylinder, and it seems like even when it was in the number three cylinder, the number two cylinder is the one that had a problem. So it's probably operational. Got number three, it looks fine. Number four, looks fine. Number five also looks fine. And number six also has something slightly pe uh, peculiar with it, but I think it's fine. Don't know how well it comes across on video, but there's like this blue spot on the side. Uh, right there. Kind of see it where I'm pointing. And that looks like it's from heat. It's on both sides. You kind of see it. So maybe number six is a little bit iffy too. All of these, to some extent, had some heat marks on it, but the most pronounced by far is on number six. There's one, two, and I swapped positions, so that's the new one. Three, four, five, which is prior to see on camera, but it's broken, and six in my hand. All right, this should be a pretty simple process. We've got our compression tester installed. And all we're gonna do is you place it down the hole, you turn it by hand until it's tight, the O-ring will seal. Then we come inside the car. Also I have this here with the cylinders. It's front to back, so number one's in front, number six is in the back. Then we get inside the car, hold the accelerator to the floor. Obviously make sure we're not like in gear or something like that and try and start it. Which this car does have a clutch uh, safety in it. But we'll take it out anyway. Apparently lock the car when you sit on your keys. So stick it in the ignition there. Foot to the floor with the clutch in. That should be a flood clear mode. And then we're gonna crank it like five times. So one, two, three, four, five. 
and then we'll take a look at the number and record it. So this cylinder should be good. You can see right there, 180. So I'm gonna repeat that for all the cylinders. So let's see, one-handed here, of course. So we've got 180 on that. So write that down. So we have 180 recorded on number one. We can reset the gauge by pressing in this button. Let's the air out, we move it to the next cylinder. So I'm gonna do that for the next six and we're next five and we'll see what the result is. All right, I did cylinder two last because of the debris down in that cylinder that spark plug well. And as you can tell, it's about 190. I think it, it drops a little bit as it sits here. And here's our numbers. Got 180, 190, 179, 185. Number five, the first time I tested it was 160, but I think I got the full five cranks out of it. Tested it again, got 170. And number six is 190. And this one is also crossed out because I messed up. I forgot to press the pressure release valve before moving it. So that's why it was high. I want to check number five again. But if there's a weak cylinder in this car, it's number five. I think all these numbers are even enough. The car should run okay. So the most likely cause here is probably uh, electrical in nature or it's because of the mismatched spark plugs or it's because of that spark plug that was broken in number five. I tested number five again, and this time you can see almost 180. So that puts it in line with the rest of them. The difference here is I did get the five cranks out of it. Some of these were more like six cranks, and I had it on the battery charger, which most of these were. It uh, kicked off right when I was doing that cylinder, so that probably explains the discrepancy. Uh, everything looks very even, very healthy on this engine. So I'm going to put it back together and end the video. Perfect.